Hey 103 classes, it's Mr. Dow. I wanted to uh, do a little more work with you on how to support your ad analysis when you, when you actually have to write a claims paragraph and how to incorporate that evidence using the hamburger technique which we worked on in paper number one. So um, yeah, let's take a look at an ad that I've got here and I'll show you the evidence for the ad that I have and we will I'll show you how I build up the, uh, the paragraph as I go. So this is an old-fashioned um, cigarette ad for Camel Cigarettes. Notice uh, Camel, where a man belongs. I've got a picture of a guy here smoking a cigarette by himself in this sort of very wildernessy area. And he's right in the middle of it. There's the packages of cigarettes. So I studied this ad for just a little bit because I don't think it's a very difficult one to work with. And uh, I'm sure you won't be surprised, but I came up with this as my... Um, this is, I'm going to, let me enlarge this a little bit. This is my, uh, my claim I'm going to work with here. I think they're saying that the product is masculine or manly. And um, I think I have a lot of evidence for that. But uh, what I did was I made a list of the evidence. And then I looked at the list and I said, let me order it in, um, in terms of how important the evidence is. So I'll start with the big evidence and I'll work my way down. So um, I think the model chosen for this ad, this, this guy here, I think he is the main piece of evidence that this is a masculine cigarette. And, the, and I can break down the model. I think there's a lot of details about this guy, all of which are pieces of evidence. I think um, his age, for example, is a piece of evidence. I think his, the way his hair is styled or not styled, the fact he's got that mustache, all evidence. I think his pose here, that he's sitting down in the brush, uh, leaning over with the cigarette, paying no attention at all. The fact he's in this incredible wilderness area, I think that's a piece of evidence. I think his clothing, piece of evidence. Even that little little thing there, it looks like a backpack. It's definitely a guy who's used to being outdoors in the middle of nowhere. So I took the, uh, the model, I broke it down into pieces. Next piece of evidence, I think, is the location. Um, because I, it's not enough to say, oh, he's out, you know, camping or hiking or whatever. This guy is way in the middle of nowhere. This does not look like Yosemite, where maybe somebody's going to walk by or a Boy Scout troop will walk by in another hour. This looks like Alaska or something. You are way, way on your, you are on your own out here. Um, and I think that's a piece of evidence. This is a cigarette for real men. I, at the very top, I have the obvious piece of evidence where a man belongs, that piece of text. I'm going to use that. I thought maybe I could even use the, the background of the packs of cigarettes here, the camels, as piece of evidence. But, um, that is very minor evidence compared to the other pieces. And, I, and if I really dig in on these three pieces of evidence and break down the model into more than one, I might not even need that. So anyway, that's my evidence. So what I want to do now is talk about how to incorporate that evidence into the paragraph. Remember, we're using the hamburger method. That means I'm going to, with every piece of evidence, I've got three things I'm doing. First, I'm going to set it up in a sentence. Um, I'm going to tell you where the evidence is. I'm going to say what it is. It's a picture. It's a cartoon. It's a text quote. It's a phrase. I'm going to connect it to the claim. I'm going to say, this is an example of the claim. This is a piece of evidence for the claim. This supports the claim. Uh, this is uh, this clarifies the claim. This adds on to this. I mean, there's so many things I could say, but I want to always focus the idea that I'm telling you about this evidence because it's part of my argument that the, the, that the claim is right. Then I'm going to actually describe the evidence, which means either I'm going to quote it directly or I'm going to go into the details of the evidence. I don't do that in the setup. In the setup, I might just say, oh, the model in the center of the ad. But in the when I get to this part, we're actually give you the evidence. I'm going to go into, into more in depth and I'm not going to argue. I'm just going to give you details that I'm going to tell you what, here's what I'm seeing. Here's what you would see if you're looking at that ad. The third part is I'm going to reconnect the evidence. I'm going to explain how the details of the evidence tie me back to the claim of masculinity. Sometimes that's pretty obvious. Sometimes it's going to take a sentence or two. So every piece of evidence is going to get that three-step process and that's how I'm going to build my paragraph here and I'm going to follow this because this is the order of evidence I think in terms of imp most important to least so I'm going to maintain organization as I go um, all right let me just start with you I, here's my sample paragraph uh, one thing I do recommend about when you do your own sample paragraph and really when you do almost any paragraph is uh, Write your topic sentence and then think about it for a second. Is the topic sentence completely self-explanatory or should you add a sentence to make sure that the point is clear? I might just add a sentence here. The main claim of this ad is that the product is masculine. It's a cigarette that is meant, I'm just making stuff up. I'm just trying to explain what I mean by masculine. Meant to be smoked by traditional old school manly men. Uh, the kind of men who um, who show outer toughness and independence. There we go. All right. 
I just explained it a little bit. Uh, that actually will make it easier to get the evidence across. If I have a if I have a fully defined claim, it's easier to show you how the evidence fits. So now I got to talk about the model. All right, I'm gonna here's my setup. Uh, the best evidence for this claim is probably uh, the model who takes up the center bottom frame. That's kind of where he is in the ad. So actually, I could just say the center of the ad. All right, it takes up the center of the ad. All right, the center of the frame. Okay, uh, that is my. There it is. I have done what I'm supposed to do for the setup. I positioned it. I said what it is, it's the model, and I've connected the claim saying the best evidence for this claim. Now, I, I don't want to keep saying this. I'm not going to do, like, I'm not going to say, when I get to the next piece of evidence, I'm not going to say the next piece of evidence for this claim. <laughs> but there's so many ways to do it. I'm just reminding you, this is something you want to do. Find a way to connect back to it. So now the next thing, I have to describe it in detail or quote it directly. So let's describe what exactly I'm seeing. Okay. Um, the man in the ad is pictured all alone in the wilderness. He appears to be in his 40s. That's all right, I'll give him a chance. 30s or 40s. Wearing, uh, wearing outdoor, wearing outdoor camping clothing. Let me see. I'm going to say pictured all alone. I mean, he also going to say he's pictured sitting all alone in the wilderness, smoking a cigarette. Let's make this make sense. That's what I'm actually seeing. Uh, cigarette. All right. He appears to be in his early 30s or 40s wearing outdoor camping clothing um, and possibly on a long solo hike. Okay. So I gave that a couple of sentences there. Um, I think that tells me a little bit about who the guy is. Uh, and now I'll go into some detail here. Why, why do the details link to the evidence? Um, okay, let me talk about his age first. He's, he's not a college student who has little experience in life. Uh, his um, face appears somewhat worn by the environment. I'll say that. And his hair is not styled or uh, fashionable. Um, it, uh, how can I describe this hair? Okay, it, uh, yeah, it's clearly wind blown. Um, he, uh, his mustache, let's see, his mustache. Uh, is long and full, emphasizing his maturity. Okay, so I'm glad I got the mustache back in there. Um, the the expression on his face is one focused only on the task at hand, lighting the cigarette. Um, uh, lighting the cigarette. Okay, task on hand, lighting the cigarette. Um, he pays no attention to the fact that he is in the middle of a vast, wild area all alone. Um, his, fo his focus is entirely on enjoying the cigarette. Now I want to I want to kind of wrap up what I've just said here and tie me back to the claim. You know, I'll say all together, all together, the details of the photo uh, present a man who does not mind being on his own and is used to uh, used to surviving in potentially dangerous situations done i have now that was a hard one but but you know the reason that took a while is because look this is my best piece of evidence if i knock it off in three sentences 
Where am I going to go? It's like I'm then I'm just ignoring what's actually here. So um, that's the best piece of evidence. I gave it a few sentences to pin it down, right? And there it is. Now I am done with that piece of evidence. I want to go to the next piece of evidence. I will set it up. My next piece of evidence is the location of the photograph. The background of the photo also supports the idea that the product is masculine. So I, there's my setup. I, I'm not skipping anything. I, I did the same thing I did up here. It's just I didn't do it in exactly the same words. And I just want to remind you, here's why I'm going to talk about the wilderness now. It's more evidence. Now I'll describe the wilderness. Um, okay. Uh, okay, I see you sitting in some. All right. The model sits in tall. Uh, that was okay. Tall grass in front of what looks like a frozen lake lake in the middle of a vast mountain range all right Pop, the kind the kind one might see in the rockies or in alaska um okay i, I don't want to spend too much time on it, but i just want to say that he is Kind of where he is and uh there now i presented it to you now i um, that's the second part i described it now i'm going to reconnect it um the the uh photos location notice i said background here i'll say photos location here just to vary up my wording the photos location uh ties in with the point of the claim because it's not it's clearly not um showing the viewer a familiar and friendly national national park uh, in other words this man is not at the grand canyon where a mcdonald's is maybe half an hour away he's in the kind of wilderness where only serious backpackers would travel. Um, uh, the remoteness of this landscape reinforces or emphasizes uh, his independent his his um, ability to. I don't want to say survive again, you know, his ability to rely upon himself, um, which is a traditional trait of masculinity. Okay. All right. I've got me back there. Um, I'm almost done here as far as what just to, uh, emphasize. What I want to do, though, um, was to talk, get at least one uh, text for a uh, text phrase I want to use as evidence. I'm going to use the this where a man belongs. So let me just at least show you the setup. Um, I'm going to end up switching from graphics to text. I'll let the reader know in my setup. Uh, text support for the claim of manliness is in the phrase at the top of the page beneath the product name. And now I will quote the phrase exactly as it is. Uh, if the phrase is in all capital letters, I will change that because I'm typing a regular paragraph here. Um, I'm not going to, so I'm not going to just use this because they do it, just because they have it there. Um, so I type where a man belongs and it'll be there. And then after that, I'll explain this is pretty obvious. It's saying that it's in, I, it makes sense, especially when I've considered the photo. Uh, it's sort of implying that um, this kind of outdoor, wild, in the middle of nowhere place is where somebody who's an actual man would feel most at home. Does this guy feel at home? Yeah, obviously. You couldn't care less here. So uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's me doing a paragraph. And remember, this is how I got here. I studied the ad. I came up with a claim. Then I thought, what's my evidence for the claim? I listed it. Then I took that list, I put it in the order of most important to least important, or some other order, just so there's a rationale. Then, with every piece of evidence, I went one by one, I set it up, I described it or quoted it, 
I reconnected it. I do that with every piece of evidence, and then I don't I don't skip anything. And by doing that, your your um your only main your main problem just becomes. The